Well, many engaged couples are canceling or rescheduling their wedding thanks to the coronavirus. Aww. But one Michigan couple, Dan Stuglick and Amy Simonson, well, they were determined to get married and they came up with a novel plan. Just fill the pews with cardboard guests. Stuglick got a local company, Menasha Packing, to help create human-shaped cardboard cutouts in order to represent their friends. Stuglick said, I just didn't like the idea of Amy having to walk down the aisle with no one in the pews. That seemed like a very lonely walk. So I wanted to do something to represent the guests, Stuglick told WSBT TV. Uh, you know, Governor, that story reminded me of my nephew and uh, their wedding. Because uh, the, the preacher asked him, he says, now, do you want to, you want to have a traditional wedding or do you want to have a contemporary service? Well, of course, being young, they chose contemporary. And on the big day, a huge storm blew in. And on the way in, my nephew had to roll up his trouser legs because of the rain. Well, when he walked the altar to get ready, the minister rushed over and whispered, pull your trousers down. Well, the groom was shocked and replied, do you think it's too late to have the traditional service? <laughs> Hey, Keith, that reminds me of my neighbor and his wife. They had to see a therapist because she wanted to end the marriage because her husband had this constant uh, just obsession with Star Wars puns. So when the therapist asked for his thoughts, my neighbor just said, divorce is strong with this one. <laughs> well, besides that, any married man should forget his mistakes. I mean, there's no use in two people remembering the same thing. And by the way, our cardboard wedding couple, they're gonna take a honeymoon to Rhode Island once the coronavirus lockdown is no longer required. Well, have you heard the urban legend about someone who adopted a bedraggled looking chihuahua only to find that it was actually just a big rat? Well, something similar happened for real in Merseyside, England. A kind-hearted construction worker saw what he thought was an abandoned puppy on a job site. <laughs> So he did the right thing. He took it home. But later he did discover that it was actually a fox cub. Well, I'd say it's better than mistaking a skunk for a cat. Isn't that right, Pepe Le Pew? Well, once again, Governor, yeah. you, you brought up a member. Did I ever tell you about the time? You know how kind my wife is. She brought an injured fox oh, yeah. home. Amy Joe decided we would nurse it back to health and keep it as a pet. She said, We'll keep it in the bedroom for now until it's healthier. Well, I protested and asked, but what about that horrible, nasty smell? As calm as she could say, I got used to you. I'm sure he will too. Wow. <laughs> no. Uh, she gets you every time. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, every time. <laughs> I Keith, I, I would have told my wife that she needed to be more creative about a new pet and maybe think outside the fox. Ooh. Well, uh, before any British aristocrat, uh, aristocrats could hunt the fox on horseback in his living room, animal welfare came. They released it back into the wild. Now the story didn't say how he realized it was a fox, but I'll bet it was the dashing way that he could dance, showing off how he was able to do the fox trot. Mm. Ooh. Well, speaking of teaching dogs new tricks, in Lakewood, Washington, a 1996 Buick led police on a highway chase at close to 110 miles an hour. It struck two other vehicles before it was finally stopped by road Busted. spikes. Now, the cops were floored to find what they described as a very sweet pit bull terrier behind the wheel of the car. Her owner said that he was trying to teach the pooch how to drive. Well, mistakes happen. No need for the dog to tear herself up about it. Wow. Hmm. Obviously, the canine was a little rough behind the wheel and needed some practice. Although, kudos to her for being able to get a 96 Buick up to 110 miles an hour. <laughs> now, she must have had a little greyhound in her. <laughs> uh, the, the owner of the car was allegedly in the passenger seat leaning over to steer. Uh, maybe he should have just relaxed and let the dog steer. Seems like it's the leashed he could have done. Ooh. Did you catch that? 
Yeah. The least, least uh, yeah. could have done. We caught that. We got it. Yeah, well, now the owner's in the doghouse and facing multiple charges, including, surprise, DUI. And no, that does not stand for dog under the influence. But one thing is for sure, that dog owner is going to need to unleash a real bulldog of an attorney to get out of this. And I just would say that was a doggone good story. Yeah, hmm. my God. You bet. All right. <laughs> this story comes to us hot off the presses. It's a story about a tractor trailer full of toilet paper that crashed, caught fire, and spilled the rolls all over Interstate 20 near Dallas, Texas. The toilet paper was the large rolls used for commercial purposes. Texas Department of Transportation officials said the load of toilet paper burned extensively, according to Dallas TV station WFAA. Police and road crews were able to clean up and remove the rubble from the road, and will probably not have to worry about toilet paper for quite a while. Now, some of you have probably been thinking, how can I ever explain to my children and grandchildren someday how a guy eating bat soup in China caused a mass toilet paper shortage in the United States? Well, consider this little bit of TV history. Back in 1973, during the gas shortage, Johnny Carson told a joke. We're having, he said, other shortages besides gasoline, Carson went on to say, one of them is toilet paper. I saw a recent coffee commercial where Mrs. Olson brings a shopping bag with the coffee inside, and the housewife says, forget the coffee, just give me the bag. That joke in 1973 started the run on toilet paper that caused a temporary shortage all across the country. And before we leave that subject, I thought we might want to look at a couple of memes to show how Americans have chosen to laugh over crazed tissue hoarders, like considering the practical and common sense of it, are the total nonsense of the virus mm, wow. and paper products, wow. <laughs> or even the benefits of it, like how much easier it is now to find Waldo. <laughs> oh, yeah. And to wrap this story up, let's never forget why the police were never able to apprehend the toilet thief. Hey. They had nothing to go on. Wow. Oof. <laughs> well, just like a kid on a long summer camp bus ride, we got to go. But never forget, we read the news. Wait, don't click that button. Well, unless it was the subscribe button and then carry on. And while you're down there, hit that little notification bell too. Oh, and if you leave a like and a comment, I will personally give my dog Toby a treat. <laughs> leave a like, feed a dog, as I always say. <laughs>